We're here today in the few moments that I'm going to take with you now to talk about uh, our future. Uh, a future which is bright, uh, but filled with, with challenge. I think uh, Bill's comments about uh, ubi motus est is so appropriate. We are moving, but the world is moving too. And there are great expectations about what we can be and, and can do. This past year, as, as Bill had mentioned, we made some strides uh, in the area of our budget. And uh, I have so many people to thank in this room for what became one of, the, one of the encouraging moments of the last year, beginning with our Executive Vice President Steve Kreidler, Assistant uh, Vice President uh, Lisa Harper, the work that uh, Vice President Mark Kinders and many other people did at the legislature, the work particularly of Steve and Lisa on the budget and the budget committee over the year, and I know, because I used to be on this committee, I know how it works, you work and diligently plan and then somebody pulls the rug out from under your feet. You had all these wonderful things you wanted to do and suddenly um, someone had decided that the net wasn't going to be there and you, and you sort of fall to the floor. And, and I remember someone said to me or to a friend of mine through this year, yes, I really appreciate what you guys are talking about, but we need raises, not phrases. <laughs> this is not a phrase. Thanks to the incredible work of the team I just mentioned um, and to the work that was done with the legislature and with the two boards of regents, et cetera, our boards of regents have approved our budget for this year a budget that's built on your ability to use funds wisely and therefore accruing funds that we were able to put in the right places. You all know that in October we're going to have a permanent salary increase of 3% for all permanent uh, part-time and, and full-time uh, faculty and staff and adjunct professors. You know that we were able to raise up the Oklahoma Teacher Retirement Program base um, from 15,000, you pay on down to 10,000. Importantly, many of our employees' um, wages, which were and are re that remain too low, were raised to an appropriate floor, which, which needed to happen. We increased the number of student scholarship funds by almost half a million dollars. We were able to restore part of the reserve we had to go uh, remove funds from in order to make it through uh, other years. And um, we also were able to cover $2 million in mandatory costs. You know, you, you don't do that. Um, out of saving nickels and dimes uh, by going to the grocery store. You do that by shrewd planning, smart people, um, and a sense that we didn't go in front of our two boards of regents whining. We didn't stand in front of them and say, these are the numbers, you should give us um, an opportunity to charge a bit more than we would no have charged in the past. What we said was, we have a vision and we have a responsibility, and we have an opportunity, and we have an obligation. And we can only do this work with the vision that we have and with the trust that you've given us if we have the resources and we're nowhere near where we need to be. I agree with you and understand it completely. But I think this year we had a chance to make the case, not just in dollars and cents, but in purpose, in meaning, and in possibility and I know it was heard because some people changed the way they looked at us and looked at higher education and looked at the issues of tuition increases. So yes, we have a tuition increase for our students this year. And that tuition increase will mean that our students, if they take 30 credit hours for a full year, with tuition mandatory fees will pay a dollar and two cents more per day for their education. Now we know from the statistics that if they have a bachelor's degree and go on in their lives, the chances are that they have an opportunity to make about a million or a million, one or two more on average for their whole lifetime. So if that's the motivation, it is an incredibly shrewd investment. $373 for 30 credit hours across, across the year. And what are we offering in return? What we're offering in return is an opportunity to, to have interaction and to learn from the hundreds of years of experience, expertise, insight, and caring that populate this room and this institution. We're offering them a chance to change their lives, which is why they showed up in the first place. There isn't one person that comes in that door, whether they're old and crusty or young and naive, that doesn't have a dream, deep dream 
unspoken. I could never tell anybody that I really want to do this. And then they meet you and you bring it forth and you ferret it out and you pull on them and you push on them and you give them opportunities to learn and you give them opportunities to find out about themselves what they had never known before. And that is, they can. They can. They can come in the door one way and leave more productive, more creative, more ethical, more engaged, more powerful. You've given them the greatest gift you can possibly give. You've given them yourselves and a glimpse at the power of learning. <clears throat> there are no shortcuts to greatness. Personally, organizationally, state, country, you know this. So, yeah, so tell me something I don't know. There are no shortcuts to greatness. It's all about work. Remember the Mac Malcolm Gladwell, passion, talent, and 10,000 hours. The 10,000 hours is as important as the passion and the talent. But what you do and how you do it, and I'm talking about every one of you. I'm not just speaking to the senior professor. I'm speaking to the individual <clears throat> who has contact with our students every day. The individual who, by the way you treat her or him, well, that student will make a decision. I am worthy or I am not. I can or I always knew I couldn't. The power that you hold in the way you treat people, the power of encouragement is beyond measure. Try it out sometime. Think about in your own life when you didn't get the right encouragement. Think about the student that walks in the door the last day of enrollment. He doesn't know what he's supposed to do with his life. His mother's nagging him. His job has just failed. And he comes in the door and he's looking for an excuse to go to the parking lot. Let me get out of here. You look different than I do. It's too big. It's too unusual. And I feel so uncomfortable. I can't wait to flee. And then you step up. Each in your own way. And you create a moment which can be, to use Bill's great phrase, transformative. You're transforming them from someone who felt they were probably a failure into someone who dare to dream. And that's what this is. For all the dollars and cents, for all the buildings, for all the work you do, for all the intricacies that we deal with every day, at the end, at the very end of all this, is did they persist? Did they succeed? Did they graduate? I've never tired of graduation. I'm 43rd year now, close to 43 years. When those students, you know them, sometimes you go up and you hood them or you come up and hand them the diploma, the cover, there is a moment when you can see the culmination of all the angst, all the anguish, all the difficulties, and all the effort, and then their name is called. And they take that first step. And off in the rafter, if we're lucky not an air horn, off in the rafter, there is this, this shout, this burst. Sometimes it's one person. Sometimes it's grandma. Sometimes it's a community. Sometimes it's a tribe. There is this release because you didn't just graduate for you. You didn't just succeed for you. It was about something much bigger. And that's the message. That's the message. This is so much bigger than us. The state absolutely has its future tied to the quality of what we do and the way we proceed. This institution, along with the others, we are, in fact, one of the prime engines of opportunity and possibility. And so as we plan for our future, which we're underway right now with the strategic planning, we are focused on a few variables. Over this past summer, many people have been working on this issue. The President's Council, working with a number of people, including um, Vice President Mark Kinders and many others, to try to identify the touchstones of our future. We're calling it Vision 2020. 
Why? Because in January 1st, it'll be seven years to 2020, and this is about a seven-year plan with probably a 50-year horizon. But it's about this. It's about this learning. It's about leading, and it's about serving. And it's about creating the pillars upon which we will build this edifice. We have the groundwork. We have 123 years of history of success. You know why you're here. What we don't know is what lies ahead. Even as bright as this group is, if we did a cross-section and we asked, tell me exactly what the world will look like in 20 years, where he or she are going to be doing their work, I bet we'd have a slight difference of opinion and probably a lot of hand-wringing and, and head-shaking. So we're building an edifice of learning, leading, and serving together around a few key principles. But the, the action parts of it are up to us. And that's why I'm exhorting you today as the process unfolds. I need you, we need you, and want you to step up and in to this process. We know we're going to be a metropolitan university because that's where we are. And there's nobody else like us, not in the entire state. In fact, we're actually teaching people what a metropolitan university is and does. And we're learning it ourselves. And we know that part of that role that we play is going to be a strong community role. It's not just about doing it here and walking away. We don't do that anyway. It's about embedding ourselves into the community in a variety of ways. This community in Edmond, the metro, the state, uh, state and beyond. It's e extremely uh, central to, to, uh, to what we're about. We know that we are going to be focusing in this metro on something called transformative learning. And Bill, who is exceptional in being able to explain it, um, is understanding not something that is esoteric or strange, but really presaging what education will likely become in order to perpetuate itself. That education, formal and informal, is going to have these new modalities because of the impact of technology and a variety of other issues. But we're not just saying it. We're bringing the, the, the country together here next spring to do it with Vince Tinto and a lot of other people. And we're working that out together. And that transformative learning puts you, all of you, right at the center of an individual student's transformation. She's going to become something different because you were here and she becomes what I refer to as a college of one. How many times have you told people, focus on lifelong learning? The college of one is the notion that when she walks away, she has on board not everything she will ever need to know, but much more important, that she leaves here with her mind and her heart wrapped around a love of learning and understanding that that learning and that love is going to serve her and her family and her community and her country so well because that is the issue. We need a state of learners where the passion for learning rivals the passion for sport. And I love both, both. But I can't love one more than the other. If we model the way, if we demonstrate the quality of what we do here and our connection to community, then this notion of transformation and the transformative process that goes on in the individual will become self-evident. We have a long way to go. But we know as a metro institution involved in what learning must become, we're going to begin to mesh these together, and, but we don't have the details. And we don't know how we're going to do this. That's why you're here because we're gonna do this part together through the processes that will be set up and you'll learn more about it. And it's going to happen rather rapidly. We need every ounce of your input. It's not gonna take a lot of your time, but we need you involved. If something sounds unusual, say it. If you don't understand a concept, mention that. If something is exciting or intriguing, let's explore it. People are watching you. People are watching the University of Central Oklahoma in Oklahoma and outside, you have pushed us onto the uh, perimeter of national prominence in a number of ways. And now we get to continue to walk that talk. And I think this plan, our vision for 2020 that we will create together around the metro institution, playing those metropolitan roles, helping people understand what that means, 
and reinventing not just how we learn, but the love of learning. Every one of you is an emissary for what learning means. Now, you know this in terms of your own family. I'll bet there isn't one of you that wouldn't do anything in your power to help a granddaughter or a son or a nephew or somebody who you know is ready to take that next step in their lives. You would, there's not even a question. But how wide do you draw the circle that you call family? A few moments ago, we were exhorted by our incredibly talented students that we are family. And Mother Teresa tells us that you can really define the quality of a people by how wide they'll, in fact, draw that circle that they call family. Well, we, every August and spring, we create a family, a new family, an opportunity. This is such incredible work. 43rd year for me. And someone said recently, so, you know, you seem pretty enthusiastic about this. And uh, you're getting pretty old. And um, so how do you keep this enthusiasm up? It's real simple formula. Very simple. Spend time with students. Remember what you were like when you were 18 or 28 or 38. Remember what you hoped for. Remember who stepped in and made a difference in your lives. Remember all the things that didn't go right. Remember all the professors and all the staff that didn't treat you well. Remember all the roadblocks that were thrown in front of you so you wouldn't succeed. And then just brush them away. Just push them out. Because that's not what we're about. We open the gates. We open the doors. We open our minds and importantly, we open our hearts to these people that are in our family and to one another. So, the future, one day at a time, but with a broad perspective, looking to 2020, time of excitement, time of challenge, a time when higher education is being pilloried from virtually every corner. You are the profession from which all other professions emanate. Let's have an astounding year taking care of our students and taking care of each other. Thank you for the honor of being here for another year with you.